Welcome. In this video, we will go through the step-by-step -step process of setting up DDUP for your SharePoint. Let's get started. We begin on the Marketplace page of the application, ensuring that the free plan is selected. Once confirmed, we click Create to start the setup process. The first step requires us to select Azure resources for access and deployment. Here, we need to choose a subscription. Select a resource group where the deployment will take place and pick a region for deployment. Next, we set a web app name. This name will be used in the URL where we access the application. It's important to note that this must be globally unique, meaning no other user, including ourselves, can have the same name in another deployment. We also provide an application name, which serves as the internal identifier within Azure and a managed resource group, which is automatically created to store all application resources. In the application settings section, we need to enter an administrator email. This must be a Microsoft associated email account. It will be used for the first login and to configure access settings. We then choose a VM size, which determines the virtual machine's capacity to run the application. The available options follow Azure's sizing conventions, so the choice should be based on the workload requirements. The free version of DDUP uses an embedded database, which is recommended for SharePoint environments with up to 1 million files. If your workload exceeds this, it is recommended to upgrade to the paid version, which allows for a dedicated database as a separate Azure resource. We now move to the JIT access configuration, which adds an extra layer of security for application resources. If enabled, JIT access allows you to define who can access the application's resources and how long they have it. For this demonstration, we will leave this setting disabled. At this stage, we reach the Review plus Create tab, which provides an overview of all the settings we've configured. After verifying everything is correct, we give our consent. Then, we click Create. Once we do this, we are redirected to a deployment status page where we can track progress. After a few minutes, the deployment is complete and we can click Go to Resource, which takes us to the resource group where the managed application was created. Inside the managed application, we go to Parameters and Outputs. At the bottom of the page, in the Output section, we find the generated application URL. This is based on the web app name we set earlier. To begin using the application, we access this URL. We log in using the administrator email set during setup. It's important to note that the virtual machine has a startup time of a few minutes, so the site may not be accessible immediately after deployment. Now that DDUP is installed, we need to connect it to our SharePoint account. To do this, go to portal.azure.com. Sign in with the subscription account linked to the SharePoint instance. To set up the necessary credentials, we must create an app registration. Search for App Registrations in the Azure portal. Click New Registration. Assign a name. Leave the other settings as default. Click Register. Now, we link the DDUP application to this app registration by creating a client secret. To do this, navigate to Certificates and Secrets in the left menu. Click New Client Secret. Add a description. Select an expiry date and click Add. It's important to save the client secret in a separate document because once you leave the page, you won't be able to see it again. Losing this information could prevent you from connecting DDUP to SharePoint properly, so make sure to store it somewhere safe. Additionally, it's crucial to copy and save two key details for future reference. 
the application or client ID, which can be found in the overview section and is required for authentication, and the directory or tenant ID, which identifies the Azure directory link to your application. Keeping these credentials stored safely is essential to ensure a smooth setup process and prevent any access issues down the line. Next, we return to the DDoP application and navigate to the Credentials section. Here, we click on Add New Credentials, enter a name, and paste the tenant ID, client ID, and client secret that we saved earlier. After clicking Save, the credentials are registered, allowing us to add the SharePoint sites we want to scan. When adding a site, we can either select existing credentials or add new credentials directly from the same window. To test the setup, we add a SharePoint site and click Save. If we receive an error when adding a site, it's likely due to missing API permissions. To resolve this, we go to App Registration, navigate to API Permissions in the left menu, and click Add a Permission. We then select Microsoft Graph, choose Application Permissions, search for Sites, and select Sites Read All. Similarly, we search for Files, select Files Read All. After adding the necessary permissions, it is crucial to click Grant Admin Consent for Microsoft, as this step authorizes the application to access SharePoint data. Without it, DDoP will not function properly. Once consent is granted, we return to DDoP, where we can either remove and re-add the site or simply click Retry. With the necessary permissions in place, we can now scan our SharePoint site. We return to the DDoP main page, start a rescan, select the site, and click Confirm. The scanning process begins, systematically analyzing the selected SharePoint site to identify files, assess their sizes, and detect any duplicates within the storage. Once completed, we see two pie charts that provide insights into the total number of scanned files, their size distribution, and the number of duplicate files detected. In this example, 550 files were scanned, and out of those, 546 files were identified as duplicates, giving us a clear overview of storage usage. That's it. You now know how to set up DDoP, connect it to SharePoint, and run a scan for duplicate files. Thank you for watching.